Hey, everybody. So uh, we're making an announcement. We're not raising any more Frenchies. We're out of the Frenchie business. Now we're in the great grandbaby business. Yes. Who is this, Tammy? It's my little Callahan. It's Callahan. It's my great grandbaby. Isn't yes. he pretty? He's very pretty. He's a pretty boy. He's very pretty. He's pretty special. So we thought we'd. So this is my first granddaughter. This is my first great grandbaby. Great grandbaby, and this is this is also uh, a cherub and. Uh, um, Brady. Br Brady is our operations manager. So Brady is down here buying a car today, and so we're babysitting. So we're going to include him. So let's mm -hmm. have a look here and see if we can't get to, sorry, Perfect. taking a few seconds to get to the comments to find out what people have been asking. I'll get to it in a second here. Comments. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. So M. Collins says, can you remove dew claws yourself? It would, save, it would save me hundreds of dollars. You bet you can do it yourself. It's very, very simple to do. Just follow the videos that we've got up there. I mean, it's super easy to do. And it's, it, but you remember, do it between three and five days old. Don't wait till they're over a week old. Certainly seven days is pushing it. Don't go over that. Uh, Jesse Flores, uh, parentage explains, says, thank you, this really helps. Um, SS Jones says, thanks, James. I bought you a welcome kit. It's helped me out tremendously. Yes, it's a great product. It really does make a big difference in how easy it is and the amount of time and effort that you have to spend and how safe your babies are. So look into that. Um, lipstick on Audrey's face. Imagine that. <laughs> Susan Drock, Drock, Brocksmith. Oh, that's a nice one. James tell me you're the best. I highly recommend using their studs as well as all of their products. With all the scammers out there, you know you're getting the best with James and Tammy. Well, thank you, Susan. We appreciate that. Thank you. It's all compliments here. Isaac Gonzalez, James, you answered, you are awesome, you helped me the other day with puppies, and mum is doing great. Well, good, I'm glad that all worked out right. So we had a conversation the other day with JF about uh, um, dogs having Frenchies that the vet said, be careful with Frenchies, they can have spinal deformities. And uh, somebody at JF says, yes, um, let's just read what it says here. Um, yeah, you can have a dog that shows no signs of any problems, uh, but it can have problems later on, especially if it starts jumping off furniture. So he says, uh, they run and jump, be careful. Don't let them do that. And I think yeah. that's exactly yeah. right. Don't let your, bounce, bounce, bounce. Don't let them jump off furniture. I, uh, I, I, I yeah. would, you know, even if you've got a dog you think it's absolutely fine, I wouldn't do that. No, <coughs> no, kit, oh. kit, kit. Okay. So here's an interesting one. Honey says, the baby's fine. do you know if it's been discussed, but I'm curious as to how you would enforce a spay no. and neuter contract? What do you think about that, Tammy? How do you enforce a spay and neuter contract? Uh, I don't know how you enforce that. Right. Well, so, so here's the problem. The Maybe the, they get money back if they go do a spay That's one idea. Neuter. So here's some things you could do. First off, you could not give them the paperwork. So if you don't give them the paperwork until the dog has been snooted, because they don't need the paperwork unless they're gonna breed the dog, and you said that's not gonna happen, that's why you're gonna spay. You can't spay a dog at eight, 10 weeks old, so you can't do it before they leave. So you can hold the paperwork back, that'd be one way. Or you could charge them more money and give them money back when they've done the spay, that'd be another thing that you can do. But the reality of this is, is that you've, once the dog has left you, you really have little control over this, so you've got to give them an incentive to do what you want, which will either be in the form of giving money back or not, or, or not giving them the paperwork. Uh, Gaddy Goss says, love to watch your videos, been learning so much. Good. East Coast Kicks, bred my lilac brindle to a cream ATA and got fawns and tries and no brindles. I, yes. Exactly. <laughs> Says I don't know what happened. Well, the answer is, is that either one of two things happened. You got lucky or you didn't do DNA testing. And in fact, you got some brindles in there that you don't know about. So it's one of the two. Amy Ramos, how long till a female comes back into heat? How long, Tammy? Well, usually six to nine months after. Yes. Yeah. Can be longer, can be shorter, right? Yeah, yeah. All you do is just... Uh, it says, um, so the reverse After they've problem. had puppies, how long is it? Oh, it's, so typically after Three the puppy's been months. born, it's going to be four months. And when the puppies leave, it's going to be two months, based on it being two months for the gestation period and two months for puppies leave. But, you know, typically it's every six months, but it varies. Some dogs take longer, some less. Trent M. The IDEX machine can go... Can't, can't go past 20. That's right for most IDEX machines. So it just reads greater than 20. Is the fine care machine able to get the actual numbers for 20? Yes, it is, all the way up to 50, which is very useful. Because the problem with this is if you're gonna do a TCI or a surgical, 
you want to know when the numbers are in that 25 to 35 range. And IDEX doesn't tell you that. And furthermore, if you've done some breedings, or if you come back, I had one the other day, exactly this, came back with greater than 20. Now, I didn't believe it because it was just day nine, and this was from an IDEX machine. And uh, you know, the, the chances are that the numbers, if it's 20, it's very close to 20, and that dog could still be bred. But just to get a thing that comes back and says greater than 20 is not very useful. So I don't like IDEX for that reason. One, one more here. Uh, two more and we're done. My girls, Jennifer Baird, my girls, first litter in two days. This is my first time breeding. We're expecting, we see seven or eight on the x-ray. Got the timing right with the progesterone. I didn't know how much milk, I didn't know about milk aspiration. Oh, said, but video has saved her friend's puppies. Well, okay, that was just a comment. Good. Last one here. Yes, Jeff P. Is 30 days too early for an ultrasound? I went for one last Friday, didn't see anything, but the vet said it may be early. I felt that she has all the signs. I'm thinking about having another one done. What do you think? Yes, wait another two weeks, have another one done. Absolutely. So, so yeah, so, okay. So, bye -bye. Callahan says goodbye. Tammy says goodbye. I say goodbye. Thanks for watching. And uh, <laughs> this guy's up for sale. How much? What's the price no, on this one? No, nothing. <laughs> the parents are over okay. here looking at me and they're like, Habit. yeah, they're about to shoot me. Can't have this. You couldn't get this boy for anything in the world, could you? Yeah, you good okay. boy. All right, bye, buddy. Bye. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.